Voters in the West African nation of Ivory Coast are tentatively returning to polling booths, five years after the last presidential elections led to a civil war and 3,000 deaths. The United Nations is on standby with 15,000 personnel to manage potential outbursts. SBS journalist Alex Perry reports from Ivory Coast. The Ivory Coast, often called the Paris of Africa, today bursting with energy. The world's biggest cocoa producer and Africa's premier exporter of bananas and palm oil is renowned for its rich ethnic diversity and sense of humour. In the nation's capital, Yamasokro, the president has been launching his vision for a new Ivory Coast, one in which he says everyone can be a winner. <laughs> Et nous irons plus loin ensemble pour chaque femme, pour chaque jeune, pour chaque paysan, pour chaque planteur, pour chaque travailleur de Côte d'Ivoire. It's difficult to imagine that just five years ago, this nation of 23 million was in the midst of civil war. Then President Laurent Gbagbo and opposition Alison Ouattara both claimed to have won the election and their armies turned on each other. The tensions dated back several years and centred on nationalist values. France and the UN later helped trap Gbagbo and transfer power to Ouattara. 3,000 died and many fled. 60,000 still haven't come back. Bagbo is awaiting trial in The Hague next month for crimes against humanity. But in Abidjan today, others say it's Watera's military that committed the crimes. Bagbo's party, the Ivorian Popular Front, has put up a new candidate this year, and here members meet at night, planning to avenge what they call lies of the past. We'll make every, everything in our effort, everything as possible, to, to make him free and, and to, 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 to make him come back here in Cote d'Ivoire. That is our plan and this is our goal. The United Nations is on standby to manage any outbreaks of violence. It says a major source of potential unrest is the lack of legal citizenship for hundreds of thousands. The conflict has really exacerbated this uh, division between who's Ivorian and who's not Ivorian. And many people find themselves because of their name, because of their uh, uh, belonging to a certain ethnic group, they find themselves totally marginalized. Many Ivorians no longer attach themselves so strongly to political parties. They just want peace and for the country to move forward. With more than 60 different ethnicities, the Ivory Coast respects both government and tribal powers. While urban communities are calling for economic growth and infrastructure, those in the villages, often called the backbone of the country, just want fair prices for what they grow, especially cocoa. If re-elected, the president has promised a minimum export price of around two Australian dollars forty a kilogram. Vraiment, le prix vraiment, ça nous, ça nous plaît beaucoup. Vraiment, on doit avoir toujours le courage de faire le champ. Voilà, de bien travailler, de bien mettre en bas. A sweeter vision for a country struggling to meet the most basic needs for many of its people. In the Ivory Coast, Alex Parry, SBS World News.